Welcome to Family Basics 101. I'm Dr. Bruce McClure, and as we continue our five-part series on the different types of abuse, today we will focus very clearly on simply physical abuse. We've tried to define abuse, and today we're going to talk about one type of abuse that appears to be the most prevalent and yet it is probably the most less, least talked about abuse because of the embarrassment stigma. Physical abuse relates to any force upon the body in an attempt to control and or to render the other individual helpless or in a state of pain, fear, and even potentially death. So when we talk about physical abuse, understand that physical abuse has a wide spectrum. It can range from pushing, it can be spitting on a person, it could be throwing items at another person, shoving an individual, slapping an individual, or even punching a person, or any other method that inflicts physical pain or it involves physical contact toward the other person. So when we talk about physical abuse, always keep in mind that it's related to force upon the body and is always with an attempt to control and or to render the other person helpless or in a state of pain, in a state of fear, and potentially it could lead to physical death. When we talk about physical abuse, physical abuse might be visibly seen by others, but more times than not, physical abuse can be concealed. Physical abuse is concealed in areas of the body that is covered by clothing. Physical abuse is sometimes covered by the abused person lying about where bruises or wounds originate. For instance, a person may say, well, I tripped and fell accidentally. I twisted my ankle because of the high heels, or I twisted my ankle because I wasn't, a pan I wasn't paying attention, and I just kind of fell into, uh, my foot or my feet fell into a hole, and that's how this happened. Or I got this bruise because I bumped into a door or something just inadvertently fell and just kind of hit me in the forehead. So always understand that just because a person has a physical uh, indicator of abuse, it's not always visibly seen. And if it's physically seen, a person might lie to cover up where those physical indicators came from. Physical abuse sometimes causes the individual to not be seen in public until injuries are gone. They may miss work. They may miss social events. They'll miss church because of the evident, the open physical wound, and they would rather not be seen or their abuser will intimidate them to stay out of sight until those wounds heal. And this is due to shame. It's also due to fear that someone might ask questions about what really happened. And to avoid that shame and to avoid the potential of questions, the person would rather take their chances by not being seen. Let's talk a little bit about how widespread physical abuse really is. According to the Center for Disease Control and also for the National uh, the, for the uh, Prevention and the National Institute of Justice in a July 20, 2000 report, it estimates from one third to uh, from one half, which is 500 plus thousand, to about three million women are involved in incidents of physical abuse every year. Let me repeat that. From upward of 500,000, that's a half million to three million women are involved in incidents of physical abuse every year. And what the 
Center for Disease Control will also suggest is that that number should probably double because many people never report it. Who are the people who are the recipients of, or who are the people who are really meted out physical abuse? It could be a current spouse. It could be a former spouse. It could be a boyfriend. And in this day and age, it could even be a girlfriend that is doing the physical abuse. Women account for over 85% of those who are physically abused, with the other remaining 15% of the physically abused being men. And oftentimes, it's an unknown uh, acknowledgement that there are women who do abuse men, much lower percentage-wise, but nonetheless, there are women abusers. Physical abuse, in terms of how it grows over time, typically it escalates. Many people believe that over time the person will stop abusing me, but typically it will escalate. Let me give you some of the indicators of escalation of physical abuse. If he spit on you, he'll throw something at you. If he shoves you, he'll slap you. If he slaps you, He'll punch you. If he punches you, he will throw you downstairs. If he throws you downstairs, he'll kick you. If he kicks you, he'll beat you. If he beats you, he'll choke you. If he will choke you, there is a possibility that he will kill you. I want you to really begin to understand that physical abuse typically escalates over time rather than diminishes over time. And individuals who are in physical abusive relationships must remove themselves from the myth that at some point he will understand, he will appreciate my value, my worth, and he will stop it. That's quite a myth. For the most part, it gets worse. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 30 through 32, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, and anger, and clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to the other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sakes, hath forgiven you. One of the things about physical abuse that we know is that it is a major indicator of a carnal, sinful mind. I hate to report to you that there are many people that claim a relationship with God who are physical abusers. And yet a commandment given by God is that we grieve not the Holy Spirit. And yet there are men and women who claim close relationships, walks with God, being led by the Spirit of God, who are abusive. And that is contradictory to everything God stands for. There is a direct command in this text. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, evil speaking clamor be put away. That's a command that if you are an abuser or if you are connected to an abuser, they, if they are under the oversight of the Holy Spirit of God, they are ordered by God to put it away. And one of the ways that you can motivate them to put it away is to say to them with safety in mind that you will not allow them to victimize you any longer. I'll see you back in class again tomorrow. Don't be late and don't skip class.